Hey y'all, it's Vintage Vinny, and welcome to another Antique Store Haul. Everything I'm going to be sharing with you today came from the Fayetteville Antique Mall in Fayetteville, Pennsylvania. As you all know, I love to visit these kinds of places at least once a month, just to give vendors a chance to bring in some new stuff, maybe run a sale or two here or there, and usually I can find some pretty decent stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I spent a grand total of $102.81 in all three buildings. I did walk out with something in each of the three buildings, so that's good. One thing is actually not going to be up for grabs at a live sale, and I'll explain to you why in just a bit. So this is the first item I grabbed. It's a Lola Skultor Stouffer figurine. I'm not exactly sure who makes her because there is felt, and yes, I get the dad felt joke because I always say it in the chats. And she was half off at $3. I'm going to do some research on her first to see if she happens to be worth anything, and if she does, she'll be up on eBay. Otherwise, be on the lookout for her at a live sale because she is very springy holding that basket of flowers. And there might be some slight damage to them just because this is probably really old. But what do you expect with vintage, right? So she's really cute. In the second building, I did get quite a bit of stuff. And you all know I'm very excited about that. And this was my first piece that I found. It's a piece of Fenton, and it was $6. Really heavy-duty glass. And it's got a pink interior, so I will be looking that up to see if that's worth anything, of course. And if it doesn't happen to be to a live sale, it goes. I don't even remember where, what order I got this stuff in anymore. So this I'm going to be saving for Christmas time. It is a Napco where it looks like a choir boy holding a wreath. He was $3. He has his Napco wear sticker on the bottom of him. And yeah, he is definitely going to be up for grabs around the holiday season. I did get two sets of salt and pepper shakers. I got some anthropomorphic pineapples. They were $3 for the set. I couldn't say no to them because I love their faces. I mean, they're very fun, aren't they? Next set is a, I think it's a tomato. And he's wearing a top hat. He was five bucks, and I didn't mind paying that at all because I think he is super, super awesome. Now this was really, really interesting. I think this is a shot glass, so I did pay three dollars for it. And it's by Hazel Atlas. I didn't get a chance to do my research just yet. I am filming this on a Monday night, so... By the time I go ahead and edit this, if I find out anything, I'll let you all know. But it's really heavy-duty, thick glass. And it almost has like a torpedo shape to it, which I think is really neat. So I know that this is good quality. So this Disney bobblehead is not terribly, terribly old. It's from about 2002, so it pushes it at about 19 years old. I did pay $11.99 for this uh, Mickey face-off bobblehead for the Boston Bruins. And comps for these range from about $50, which is great, because I only paid the $12. I did list this one for about $10 more because there was not a Boston Bruins one listed. So I'm sure someone's willing to pay up just a little bit more if they're looking for their team specifically. By the way, this is listed in my eBay shop if you happen to be interested. I forgot to mention that. You guys know I'm kind of on a Cupid kick, and when I saw this Rose O'Neill ice cream tray with a Cupid doll on it, I had to have it. It was only $17, which I thought was a really good price. And of course, I was able to look this up in store, and somebody has one listed. 
that's in far worse shape than the one I'm showing you all right now for like 90 bucks. So as you can see, there is cosmetic damage. You can see some damage on the Sunday, and like there's some scraping there. And then I don't think the ice cream ad is present anymore because there is rust. But overall, this has got a great look to it. If I had to date it, I think it's probably from the 20s or the 30s. But uh, according to my research, there was nobody who indicated what era this is from. I still love it. It's adorable. So now we're looking at everything I picked up in the third building. So I spent a grand total of forty-seven seventy. I did buy one item that is not really vintage yet, so that's not going to be shared in this video. But this is what I did find that is vintage, so let's go ahead and check it out. So as I mentioned before, this is going to be for a fellow viewer, uh, Lori Ann Sugar Riches, sweet ass stuff. She shared a picture of the shade to this fairy lamp, the Indiana Glass Stars and Bars fairy lamp. And I said to her, I remember seeing a base at one of the antique stores near me, and I told her the next time that I visited, which was about a month ago, that I would go ahead and pick it up, and I almost forgot to grab it, but for whatever reason, I went back into that booth a second time and remembered, oh yeah, she has one of those shades, let me get her the base. So I paid five bucks and I just have to get this out to her ASAP so she can sell her fairy lamp and make a good, decent amount of money. So Lorian, be on the lookout for that in the mail very soon. And then this next item was five bucks. It's an Orioles Japan footed vase. And no damage to it whatsoever, but I thought it was very springy. It does appear to be a souvenir of West Virginia on it. Or it appears to be a souvenir of West Virginia according to that stamp right there. So I'll clean this up and I may or may not offer this up at a live sale. Depending on if it has any value on eBay. More than likely it doesn't, so I'll let you all determine how much that's going to cost. So I have one more item that is one of my favorites next to my QP ice cream tray. And the last item that we're going to be taking a look at that I picked up from the Fayetteville Antique Mall is this really cool Pabst Blue Ribbon bar sign. I would date this to about circa 1962. It's uh, basically a sign which shows the replica of Jim Corbett when he defeated John Sullivan in September of 1892. Now, I did know that the boxing gloves did have some cosmetic issues. This one down here specifically is broken. I did pay 30 bucks for the sign, and I think that that was really well worth it to me because I looked it up online, of course, and I did not see any of them listed. Now, I am going to keep this for myself because I do like advertising, and when I can find it cheap, I will buy it. Now, I remember this being in one booth at a, this antique mall. And sometimes I think either vendors leave or they don't want the stuff that they're selling anymore or whatever it may be. And I think the antique mall takes possession of it and they mark it down drastically from what the uh, vendor was originally asking. I can't remember how much this was um, originally, but I know it was way more than $30. And it's really neat. It's got an image of the boxer and then it uh, looks like kind of like a pamphlet which shows all of the different I guess sizes of the different wrestlers or boxers sorry these this is for boxing but it's a really neat piece and I can see this being behind a bar now while some of the colors on here are not really my choice or like my preference still a neat piece because I mean I've never seen it outside of this antique mall before so Went ahead and picked it up and thought, why not? So that is everything that I would like to share with you all today. Let me know in the comment section below what was your favorite item or favorite items that I shared in this haul. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already.
Be sure and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notified when new videos are uploaded. Be sure and check me out on Instagram, the link to it is down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye guys!